Objection 5. I am a sincere religious person, and that will ensure my salvation. In the Gospel of John, we have an interview between Jesus and a very influential leader named Nicodemus. Nicodemus was wealthy and a member of the Sanhedrin, the ruling council of the Jewish nation. He probably fasted several times a week, spent time each day praying in the temple, tithed his income, and was apparently a noted religious leader. He would have been considered a good Christian in some circles today. In fact, far better than many of us. But Jesus said that all Nicodemus's goodness wasn't enough. Instead, Jesus told him, You must be born again. And Jesus went on to explain this new birth, this spiritual regeneration, which is accomplished only by the Holy Spirit of God. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but do not know where it comes from and where it is going. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. John chapter 3 verse 8 There is something mysterious about this. We cannot fully understand how the new birth comes to us. It is from above, not from the earth or from within our human nature. It comes because of the love and grace of God. It comes because of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It comes because of the action of the Holy Spirit. Now one can imagine what a shock it must have been to Nicodemus, or to any religious person, to learn that religion is not enough. It never is. Nicodemus came to Jesus addressing him as a teacher come from God. But Jesus knew Nicodemus as he knows all men. And Jesus knew that he needed more than a teacher. He needed a savior. He needed more than religion. He needed regeneration. He needed more than the law. He needed life. Jesus got right to the point and told him, You must be born again. And Nicodemus asked, How can a man be born again? Surely he cannot enter his mother's womb a second time. And here Jesus pointed out the dissimilarity in the two births. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Jesus knew what lies in the hearts of all men, including the corruption of good-intentioned religiosity, the fatal disease in all mankind that causes lying, cheating, hate, prejudice, greed, and lust. This is called sin. For sin is the violation of God's law that prevents man from functioning in his God-intended purpose. All of us like sheep have gone astray. Each has turned to his own way. Through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men, because all have sinned. Thus a radical change is needed in the inner being of every person. This is a change that no person can earn or do of himself. It is a change that science cannot accomplish for man. It is something that only God can and must do. You see, a person can be sincere, but be sincerely deceived or sincerely wrong. And why good intentions alone mean nothing to God? Because they are rooted in a person's own understanding of a situation. And if this understanding is not in line or agreement with the wisdom and the commandments of absolute truth of Christ, then they can only be rooted in a person's own understanding, resulting from their own ignorance, selfishness, corruption, or blindness. And God will not violate his integrity for a person's limited understanding. There is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 12 Sincerity isn't enough if the object of belief is not true. And Jesus taught that simply practicing religion doesn't excuse anyone. Woe to you teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee! First clean the inside of the cup and dish, and then the outside also will be clean. Matthew chapter 23 verses 25 to 26 for I tell you the truth, 
No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. John chapter 3 verse 3